everyone. I do often go onto the Shader Forge forums to see if there's any questions I could possibly help out with, try to answer and so on, and also to look for inspirations to what I want to make next. And so this question came up, make a scanning effect like No Man's Sky, and he wants to do that using post-processing. Uh, so I basically just told him you could try and use the depth buffer and cycle through a palette based on the gradient from the depth. And so I went ahead and tried to do that. And it's really simple. I should show you how it's made. So how do you make a depth buffer or use the depth in a scene? In a scene? You create a de scene depth and this UV thingy is, which UV is it going to sort of be pro projected from? And since we were doing screen space uh, post-processing, so let's use a screen position. Set it to screen UVs, so it's actually following the entire screen. And we could could hook this up to the emission already, but then we're just getting the black to white um, depth because it's sort of doing a depth from like this point is whatever in depth and that would be a certain color in depth. But we want to sort of make a scanning effect which could be positioned whatever, wherever and be a certain size, right? So how do we do that? Could we clamp it possibly well you could and I'll show you why you could just let me turn off post processing just so we don't have any errors um, and then we create uh, let's just make two value nodes just for the sake of it and hit compile I've actually set the blending to adaptive. We should set it to I think what this one just to have it shown. All right, fifteen. That should be enough. There. Now, if we have it to like that value, as you can see in <laughs> in here, you can see sort of that it goes from a gradient zero black to one, which is white or whatever value it's supposed to be. So we could use clamp, but it'll look kind of strange. So we're not going to use clamp. And we're going to set it back to, you know what? We're going to set it to opaque right now, just to show it off. If we hook this up to emission and hit compile, it's completely white. I'm just playing around right now. Bear with me. Nope because the values are so exaggerated, so never mind. Now we use the clamp again. Not this one. Just to show it off. I'm just goofing around right now, sorry. Uh, no. Not opaque. Let's keep it up. Multiplicative, like so, yeah, the gradient. But we want to have a certain position sort of cut off. How do we do that? Clamp doesn't do the trick, but we could use step. That should do the trick. Hit emission and make a, like so. And if we set this value to like 15, now we've or actually, like, set it to 5, that's close enough. Now it's cutting off a certain position in depth. And we could do this twice with another step, which is then reversed using a 1 minus. And let's use another value node. Like so. And just have to combine them back together, sort of. Hit compile. Now if we set this to like four. There we go. Now we we have sort of cut off 
into positions in world space, no, not world space, in depth, rather. <laughs> and if we add in, say, a color node, you know what? I wonder, does this work? Yes, it does, okay. All right, so now we sort of used a color vector, sort of, to make a red scan line. But we do want this blending to be adaptive, so it sort of adds to the scene. So it doesn't actually cut off the entire colors of the scene, but adds onto it. That's why it's called additive. Did I say adaptive? I meant additive, so yeah. So now you can see that if we set these values to something else, it'll be another position in in the depth, right? And that's what I've done down here. Oh, whoops. Put in submission, hit compile. So this scan position is well, if we go to the material that I've made and start putting this into, you can see that it, it's put into a position in the depth that we've used. And we have a scan size to set the size, which is what we did earlier, but I've subtracted the scan position by the size. So you get, so the size actually moves with the uh, scan position in the depth and then we've used the two step nodes to create the cutoff that I showed earlier. So multiplied by a color and another value for the strength of the of this. That doesn't show up now but if we enable say post-processing going to the material again and start using the the, uh, the scan strength. It'll actually be like affected by the by the um, <laughs> the bloom. So, so kind of gets a gradient effect, but not really. Whatever. It's really simple. E really, really simple. You could even animate this, which is why I sort of set these two together so you only need to affect one to animate it. And I've done that and I'll show you how it looks when it's animated. It looks like that. Now I've only set it to like, I don't know, 25 units forward so yeah, it shouldn't take too long until it loops around again. You could set it to not loop. Uh, that's your preference if you want to, but this is just a showcase of how easy it actually is to make it. Now post-processing you have to use a a mesh in front of the camera. Let me just hide this. So here's the camera and in front of the camera is a it's basically just a, uh, a quad for you. Right click and create a quad and put it sort of in front of the cam camera so it covers the entire uh, first room of the camera. Then you should be good to go since the the projection of the what's ever on the, the, um, the quad is in screen space. That's why we use the screen position. So it, it'll always follow the camera as long as it covers the entire frustrum, right? If we set the scale of this uh, quad down, it'll start like cutting off. So you have to make it bigger than the actual like field of view of the camera. Super simple. Really, really simple. Not difficult at all. Made it in like a couple of minutes. <laughs> Because the logic is so simple, it's you could sort of make 
do this a couple of times to uh, make several samples to create gradient effects, but I don't want to do that. This is just to show off the principles of it, right? So that's how easy uh, this thing is. Hope this helped. Uh, if you have any questions, post them in the comments section below. You know. Alright. Take care now. Bye-bye. <laughs>